Should we call the meeting to order? Let's. Yes. Say, so, yes. so move. <laughs> Yay. We uh, have to roll call. Do you want to say who's here? Okay, so Alex is shaking his head. Yeah. Yeah. Laurie Busada. <laughs> David's I'm frozen, I think. Trying to guide people. I'll be back in a second. Hold on. <laughs> oh, Laurie, I'm here, M.A. Sweetland. <laughs> okay. Greg Franceschi. Steve? Are you oh, here? I thought I said I was here. I'm here. Yes, Steve Eifert. <laughs> Am I unfrozen? You're unfrozen. Oh, good. I, and you're it's here. Chilly in the room. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a guest. Um, why don't we skip the minute review until later and go to uh, Kyle? Well, is is um, uh, Keith going to join you or? Okay, so maybe maybe we'll. Keith and Jacob, I think, are both. Running there's on. three minutes early. We can do a quick minutes review. <laughs> oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'll hang on. I know Keith is joining. He, he's more punctual than me. I'm just oh, early. Oh. <laughs> well, Keith. Let's do minutes. Welcome, Keith. Hi. Thank you very much. Good to be with you. Uh, is Jacob likely to be joining, or should we go ahead? Jacob said he was going to join, so let me just, uh, I think we were all thinking 440, so let me just check you, with you. You were supposed to be thinking 440. <laughs> good. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> and Here comes Reed. Ah, good. And we have Keith. Uh, should we <clears throat> start with the minutes from two meetings ago in November that we put off till now? And see whether we approve those. They look all right to me. I haven't spruced them up or anything. I try to keep them pretty boring. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll second, I'll, I, I, uh, I move we accept the minutes. Let's put it that way. From, from uh, November 19th. Whatever date that was, yeah. No. November 19th. November 19th. Okay, yeah, I second it. So, shall we vote? Those in favor of it? You have uh, to roll. So I'm seeing all hands up except uh, for our guests. Where'd Steve go? Uh, ah, there we are. Okay, that one's done. Uh, <laughs> Minutes proved from the uh, 20, uh, 19. Okay, now what's the other one? I gotta look. 17, December 17th. So you're here? Yeah, yeah. December 17th, 2020. Uh, anybody see things that need amending? I move the minutes of December 17th. Do we have a second? Second. So let's vote. Hands up. If it's not unanimous. We'll roll call. It's unanimous. Steve, was that you that seconded or Greg? Oh, me. That was Steve. OK. <laughs> okay. okay. So I think we have our two guests here, huh? I think we have everybody on board here. Let's move on to their segment. Excellent. Well, do you want me to do a, um, a quick introduction on behalf of Nexamp? We've got uh, three of us on this afternoon. So my name is Keith Havenor and I'm the communication manager um, at Nexamp. You probably know we're a Boston-based solar developer uh, currently pursuing a project uh, in Deerfield on the landfill there. And I know we've had some email discussions about um, how we can work together when this project comes online to make uh, space available in the program with a priority for Deer Deerfield residents first. So we thought we'd uh, come on and, and just give you a little bit of background there. But before we do that, I'll let um, my colleagues Kyle and Jacob just jump in real quick and introduce themselves so that uh, you know 
who all is here with us today. Thank you. Hi there. My, my name is Kyle Marcheseau. I'm the VP of Marketing at Nextamp. So I work with Keith and Jacob uh, and oversee all of our marketing efforts, which include uh, partnerships with towns like Deerfield uh, in turn to get uh, residents signed for Community Solar. So thank you for inviting us. I'm glad to be here. Hi, Jacob Ammon here. Um, have spoken with a couple of you guys as well over email, um, but I'm a supervisor on our inside sales team. So helping to uh, you know, basically get people informed about Community Solar, explain what the program is, answer any questions folks have about the agreement, or anything like that. So if you know residents are signing up, they're most likely talking to me or someone on our team. So I'm here to help answer any questions that might come up about the program and, and how that works. I know we may be a little bit um, away from, from some of that, but uh, happy to, to help should anything arise. Great, thanks. So, yeah. Yes, please go ahead. <laughs> thanks. Um, just, just by, I guess, by way of a little bit of background, as Jacob said, we've um, been having some email communications uh, with MA and some others on the group about um, how we can work together. And so what we'd like to talk about today, I guess, is, um, you know, what would make the most sense from your end uh, in Deerfield? What we have typically done when we've gotten interest like this from uh, communities where we're building is um, Kyle and I and others on the marketing team will work together to put together um, a program where we'd love to work with you on some sort of a direct mail educational piece to residents when the timing is right to talk a little bit about the program, uh, about this specific project and how community solar works. And then what we do is um, kind of offer anywhere from maybe a 60 to a 90 day exclusivity for town residents to come in first uh, before we open it up more broadly, more generally. Because as you probably know, so you know, just quickly, and Jacob can address any specific questions, but the way community solar works is um, you know, you don't have to be in the town where the project is located, you just have to be on the utility grid. Um, but we are always you know, looking to partner pretty closely with the communities where we're located. So we'd love to, to work with you and make that available to, um, to Deerfield residents initially. Um, did, you, did you have a certain time period that you said that they, you, know, you would open it up for? Yeah, typically, so uh, I guess a little more background real quick. We try to get people signed up um, during our construction process so that when the project goes live, um, we're ready to go from day one and start offering people credits from the project. So for us, um, talk about two different time frames. So for us, um, it's looking like I just got an update from our development team the other day, and it's looking like the Deerfield project is um, still going through some uh, transmission studies and some permitting issues and some other things. They're very confident about it, but it's looking like we probably, so we're sitting here now, end of January, 2021, it's looking like construction probably would not start until later this year. Um, so we would look at sometime this fall for putting out a, a marketing piece, a letter or something, whatever makes sense, we also are happy to do depending on how things are going, then we're happy to do either an in-person information session or what we've been doing since COVID is doing some online virtual education sessions to let uh, residents know how the program works. And then what we would do, we'd you know, talk to you about what makes sense, but probably like a 60 to a 90 day period once we open it up, that it would be open only to Deerfield residents. And then after at the end of that period, um, if it's not already full, which it often is when we partner with a community like this, uh, we would open it more broadly to, to other folks in the utility territory. How, how many shares or is it sold by share or? Yeah, it's sold. Um, and Jacob can give you a little bit of uh, insight as to how they do their um, evaluation. But basically, we work individually with each customer who enrolls to kind of analyze their historical electricity usage and size the share of the solar farm based on um, their projected needs by kind of looking at some historical data. And Jacob, I don't know if you can clarify a little. On yeah, that. so basically each 
um, anyone who's subscribing to any project, it's the, the allocation of their share of the solar farm is going to be based on how much energy they use and, and how much they pay to the utility. So someone that's using double the amount of electricity and therefore let's say paying double to the utility over a year, they're going to receive a, a double the share of the project. So we're sizing your allocation to match your usage. And so the exact number, it's not like there are 100 folks that can sign up 100 spots. Um, it can vary a little bit. I'm just taking a look at the project in their field. From what I can tell, um, again, I'm not on the development team, but it looks to be about a three megawatt DC project. Um, I can take a look and see kind of what we would expect um, based on the averages that we tend to get for Eversource um, folks and see what, what we might kind of estimate would be the, the amount of people that would sign up. Um, but this can kind of vary a little bit depending on how the project is structured and, and how they are um, size in the, the total project. Okay. Yeah, I think it's so just real, real quick. One thing I'd add to what Jacob said is I, Jacob, my guess would be just looking at the numbers, probably like in the 250 shares range, just three megawatt project. And given what the the average size of the Eversource West customer is. Yeah, so, probably around that. 5,000 annually. Is that what you use as an average? Pardon me? Take Am I muted? No. No, no, no sorry. No. Just, just <laughs> missed what you said. Uh, I just said, do you, as, do you use a uh, 5,000 uh, kWh kilowatt hours as an average usage? What, what number do you use? Yeah. So what, what we'll typically, so when we're looking at your usage, um, we're looking at your kWh, we're looking at how much energy you use, but we're really concerned with how much are you paying? Um, we're going to say, let's, you know, let's say whatever energy you use, you're paying a thousand dollars a year to Eversource. Um, if someone has a different supplier, maybe, and they're paying double the rate, um, they're spending more. That's what we're looking at. At the end of the day, we're going to say, this is how much you spend over a year. We want to give you a share of our solar farm that produces enough credits to cover nearly that entire cost. Okay, so you're looking, you're looking at the dollar amount, not the usage amount, which yes, is we very interesting. Thanks. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> We, we want to know at the end of the day, when we're doing our analysis, we're saying, how much did you, sp did you spend over the year? Um, total to Eversource, obviously just for electric. Um, and then, and that would be electric delivery and supply. And then we want to cover about, or give you a share of our solar farm that's going to cover about 90% of that. Can I, can I ask a silly question? I mean, we're not, we're not really allocating by like electron. Oh, no, <laughs> I mean, no, no, no. You're just kind of, <laughs> ballparking the how how do you i mean you're, you're are you putting a dollar value on the amount of energy that the solar farm will produce and then just dis distributing that value versus we're, the actual mm -hmm. kilowatts or yeah we're making an estimate so wait you know we'll say the project is whatever size we know based on projects in this area based on the you know all these different kind of technical factors this is how much we expect the project to produce over a year, let's say. And so we're going to say, you know, your account is enrolled for 1% of that. You know, let's say it's 1% of that is that $1,000. So you'll, you'll be getting a 1% share of the solar farm. Whatever it produces in any given month, you're going to receive that 1% of that credited to your bill. So everything is really based on um, that total dollar amount that you spend and then what we expect the solar farm to produce. And then we're gonna give you a percentage of the project based on that. Um, question, Steve. are there any other projects that are coming online prior to our landfill project that we might be able to you know, get in on earlier? Kyle can maybe speak to this a little bit. Um, I know we're, we're in the process of um, potentially adding some, some more projects in the pipeline that will likely be coming online sooner than that one, but I don't think that everything has been finalized on those just yet. So right now, if you, you were to enroll, you would be enrolling on our wait list. Um, and anyone is free to do that right now. But if we this other project gets up and running before then, you will just simply be added to that project. Obviously, we, we would let you know that and, and let you know what the timing is. But there will probably be another project online before the Deerfield field landfill project is. Correct. Yeah. And so and Deerfield residents will be are eligible to, to sign up for projects as they become available. So, you know, what will, what will likely happen is, you know, when these projects open up, 
we normally run marketing programs, direct mail, digital marketing to uh, let people know that we have space in our solar farms if they would like to sign up. Um, so there will be an opportunity, you know, uh, through those marketing uh, programs for Deerford residents to sign up. Um, and then, you know, and, and, and we know from working with towns in the past that, you know, honestly, like what, what we've seen in the past is that when a town is a host for a solar farm, it often has sort of a momentum of its own because people know about the project, they see the project. And so, you know, one thing we found is that, um, you know, it, it's wherever possible, we'd love to be able to give people a chance to sign up for the project in their town because we actually tend to find it gets people excited and we can, and, you know, the response is even better. Um, but, you know, as we go into the, later into the year, though, there will be opportunities just through our marketing in Western Massachusetts for Deerfield residents to sign for other projects if they want to get onto something sooner. M.A.? Uh, yeah, two questions. One is um, there is another NEXAMP project being built in Deerfield over on, um, what is it? It's Sawmill Plain. I no, it, uh, anyhow, it's over in, it's being built right now. It looks like it's maybe half constructed. And it's over, I don't know what the address East Deerfield is. Or is it up by the no, it's in, no, it's in West Deerfield on the other side of 91, uh, just off of, just north of uh, 116. Why do we have such a hard time remembering this name? <laughs> um, well, it's, it's, uh, it's not Sawmill River. It's, no, it's like, it's, 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 it's like one. a grass <laughs> or something. <laughs> it's a saw grass or something, no. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm seeing that there's a project on, on Set Right Road. Yeah, there you there go. We okay. go. There we go. <laughs> it's on Set Right Road. So number one, is that something that we could talk about Deerfield residents being eligible for? Or do we just, can we only do it with the town? That's my first question. So I, I can say that that project is at capacity right now, um, oh. it looks like. Um, just, just off of what I'm seeing, I can double check on that for you. Okay, um, yeah. But I, I believe that that project is, is already at capacity. Okay. So um, then the second question is, uh, are you gonna be going for the low income adder on this project? That may not be something you guys know. I actually don't know the answer to that one. We can check with BD, you do you know Keith? I don't know, yeah, I'll check with Ben. Okay, just, yeah, just, we can find uh, out. Yeah. It's a good question. We had a conversation today with uh, Colonial, who is um, our aggregator uh, for the town, and they were talking about uh, the low income adder, how their their aggregation, Colonial is doing an aggregation for low income, uh, reducing reducing the price for low income, and so. That's, you know, anyhow. So I was just curious as to whether that was going to be part of, of uh, what was happening. That, yeah, it's a great, qu it's a great it's question. We'll find out. Getting into the weeds more than probably most people want to know, get into. <laughs> you, you know your stuff, clearly. So we'll find out. I wanted to ask what the price per kilowatt hour is, the regular price. Well, um, hey, Emma, should we show him the, the chart you made and see if they're cool with that? Because we're thinking about putting out a general energy committee newsletter and we were going to include, a lot of people have gotten the orange flyer in the mail. Um, you know what it looks like. <laughs> um, your, your, your flyer, the flyer from Nexam. The, the Nexam flyer, yeah. Um, and so we were going to, and we've also gotten the one from Clean Choice Energy and uh, Constitution Energy and <laughs> yada, yada, yada. So mm -hmm. we were going to add that um, people could, you know, feel free to go ahead and, you know, um, start the process with Nexamp. Um, unless you think that doesn't make sense for us to advertise now and we should just wait until the Deerfield project kicks off. But we also made a price comparison and we probably should run it by you and see if we're on the, on the right track. What do you think? Am I? Um, David, what do you think? I'm not, I mean, it's sure. it's basically, yeah. If you, can somebody put it up as a screenshot? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Laura, uh, can I, you do it? Yeah, I can. Um, and I guess this will, um, this will hit your question, Greg. And then um, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Yeah. Um, and it also, 
like I know that um, we talk this through back and forth, but I am not, let's see if I've got it right here. I'm not positive that we got it right <laughs> about um, whether or not, okay, can you see it? So this is, this is, this is a draft. Um, so it, there are some words missing. Yeah. So um, yeah. please forgive, please forgive that. Yeah, uh, but let, let, let me finish my um, um, sentence quick before that um, about, so Dynagy is our supplier right now. There's, they're the agent, whatever for um, Colonial. Will Nexamp become our supplier or, or is Nexamp just another level underneath Dynagy? So that's a background question. Yeah, that, that's that's a good question and probably our most frequently asked question. Um, so we are different from a supplier. So we do not have a per kilowatt hour rate. Um, okay. So just kind of really high level and then I'll go down. Basically your energy supply, you're paying a per kilowatt hour rate for that. Um, and yes, you can opt for a different supplier. You may have one aggregated through the town. Looks like that's, that's the case here. Um, what we're doing is a different type of program. All that's happening is each month, your share of the solar farm, so we're allocating you a share of the project based on your energy usage. And then each month, your share of the project is producing energy that's appearing on your Eversource bill as a credited amount. So if your share produces $100 of electricity, you get $100 taken off of your Eversource bill. And then we will bill you separately for that $100 but you'll always pay us at the discount, which in, in this case is a 12 and a half percent discount. So you'd get $100 off your bill, you'd pay us $100 minus 12 and a half percent, so 87.50. That's all that's happening is you're staying with your supplier, you're paying the same kilowatt hour rate for the electric or you're being billed at that same rate. All that's changing is we have, we're applying a payment to your bill, you're paying us back at the 12 and a half percent discount. Does so that make sense? Yeah, yeah. The fact that um, that you're not a supplier really clarifies it for me. Okay. So yeah, Laurie, it's it's exactly the same. Uh, since you have so, if you you have solar energy, solar panels, it it's basically as if you it'll be the same as if you had you own your you you own these solar panels and they produced energy. So yeah, but come but in I way. but it's not, not the same not because um I'm I'm credited based on the um, the amount I produce so. I, yeah, it's it's not kilowatt hour based. It's it's um, percent of the project based, right? The amount. Right, and so all that's happening is, is what's appearing on your bill is not a negative kilowatt hour amount. It's a negative dollar amount. So whether your share produced a hundred dollars, then you'll see a, a negative hundred dollar line item on your bill. If it produced one hundred and twenty dollars, you'll see a, a line item for negative one hundred and twenty dollars on your bill. On, on the Eversource bill. On your Eversource bill. And then we're okay. just gonna charge you that amount minus the discount. Okay, so does this chart make sense then, I wonder? <laughs> well, yeah, I think it does because what's okay. happened is, first of all, that minus 12.5 should be, it got moved over in the, oh. so it should yeah. be. Oh, yeah, it should be it at should the, be the next, next thing. thing. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so this aggregation, the two options we have for aggregation are 5% green and 50% green. So the, the supply cost for our aggregation over on the final column, that's the actual kilowatt hour um, cost. So then you multiply that out for average total bill. Um, for, oh, well, I'm sorry, for the average supply, that's, that's assuming uh, 5,000 kilowatts uh, 5,000 kilowatt hours per year for an average household. So if you multiply this number by 5,000, 5, sorry, uh, you get $57, $67 for the 50, and then Eversource at, that, at their winter rate is $63. And then, and then adding in the amount that you would play, pay for distribution, on that bill, this is your total average bill per month. <laughs> yeah, so so that ma that makes sense to me. The only thing I would say um, on our side to just be wary of is 
when we apply that credit to your bill, it, it's, you know, if you have solar panels, you'll, you'll see this, but the amount of credit that you receive is going to vary. So you're going to receive more credits to your bill, obviously, in the summertime when the days are longer right. and less in the winter. But that's why, again, why we're looking at things annually is to account for that type of seasonal variation. So that's where we're going to say, you know, you spend $1,000 over a year has a, a share that we expect to produce $1,000 of credit. So you're, you're always going to pay us at a 12.5% discount for what's applied to your bill. But what is applied to your bill um, may not always match up perfectly. You may get a little bit less than you need. You may get a little bit more. Um, any extra is going to roll forward, never expires. Right. So, so basically what I did, the, the, the 17, $117.77 is 12.5% less than $134.59. That's not, that's not correct, though, because that oh, whoops. should be 12.5% off the supply bill, not the not the. No, so it's total bill. It's off of your, the credit can apply to your entire bill delivery and supply. All we're okay. doing is just making that payment to your bill. Uh, and yes, if we applied $134.59 to your bill, then that, that's what you would pay us for that, that month, the $117.77. Oh, okay, that's good. That, that's the difference between the aggregation and NextAmp, is that NextAmp applies to the whole bill, or the aggregation just applies to the supply. So oh. it... It is that, that that that's one of the things that's different too. So we would we would be getting two bills then, one from Dynergy and one from Nexamp. No, with the I mean one from one from uh, Eversource and one from Nexamp. With the aggregation with Dynergy, I mean, do, do we are we getting a separate bill from Dynergy for for the? No, no, no. that's all. Included. That goes straight through. To, at, to yeah, Eversource. it's actually listed on your Eversource bill. It, it lists Dynagy as the supplier. I just noticed that the other day. So, okay. yeah. Yeah. Can I just ask a quick clarification, Jacob? So you're saying that your the solar arrays output is going to fluctuate based on the season and the weather. And so our um, the amount, so our 1% might be different because of that. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But whatever we apply to your bill, it'll always be at that discount. But, I, but, it, but it won't be the same dollar amount. It'll be. It, it'll vary. You, you would expect to get a larger credit during the summertime and a smaller credit during the wintertime. Mm -hmm. And I think we've established, thanks, Jacob, to emails, that it's because Eversource does include the Dynagy bill the discount of the 12.5% is above or beyond the discount of the aggregation. Yeah, so you're kind of doubling up on your discounts, essentially, if you want to look at it that way. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of, of Deerfield residents signing up now and getting on the waiting list, it sounds like there's no disadvantage to that. Um, however, you know, it involved, would involve quite a bit of publicity and explanation, probably more than in this, to to make that happen. Um, is there any? And you were saying that you usually do that during the construction phase. Is there any need for us to push that and get people to sign up early, since we're going to have a priority of that sixty-day period? I mean, I, personally, I, I don't. I don't think so. I, I think. I mean, I, I might suggest that. You know, if if you're going to be putting out a newsletter soon and um, like this one, if you want, we, we can work with you on sort of explaining how Nextamp works because people will obviously have heard of us because we've been marketing. And we can also explain here that unfortunately, you know, literally as of the last couple of weeks, our, our projects in Eversource West are currently full. Um, so if someone wants to sign up now, they can. They may be waiting for a little while before they get onto a project. Um, and then what we can also do is just stay in touch with you during the year so that, you know, as the, as the, if, as you, if you want to inform the community about, you know, when there's shares available, um, you can do that. And then obviously when the Deerfield project, you know, gets the green light and we start constructing, I think at that time, that'd be a great time to do a, a strong push if you're, if you're open to it in the town. Um, and what we've done in the past is hosting an information session, either virtually or in person, if we can do that at that point. Um, direct mail that we would um, you know, get approved by the town and send to residents in the town. 
Um, so, you know, definitely we could do a strong push on that. Um, but we'd be happy to work with you to kind of just help people understand how the program works right now in case they do want to sign up. Uh, I'm a little hesitant just before you get the word from the utility. It, isn't that pretty much a make, <clears throat> make or break type thing? So, so we're, we're, yeah, I mean, we're expecting to have projects in Eversource West. You know, right now we don't have, um, we're, we're still in development on a number of them, you know, so some of them may not come through, but, you know, some definitely will. Hopefully the Deerfield one will. So okay. um, I guess what I'm saying more is that if I was, if someone asked me in Deerfield right now, hey, should I sign up? I would say, you know, Yes, you know, you should, or I would say, yes, you're welcome to sign up. It may take a little while to get you on a project. And then, you know, in three months, hopefully I can come back to that person and say, yes, you should sign up now. And we should have the project ready to go, you know, at, on this date. Eventually the Deerfield project will be good to go. And I'll be able to say, yes, you should sign up and we'll put you on the Deerfield project. And that's going to yeah. go live at this time. So it's just kind of getting, you know, we're, we're sort of at a lower level of certainty right now. We know we'll have projects. We just don't know exactly which ones and when they'll go live. Okay. There's no disadvantage, like, you know, so I signed up already. I, I took the big leap. <laughs> Great, thank um, you. <laughs> but yeah, Jacob convinced me. But um, there's no, there's no um, difference if I'm actually ending up on, uh, I don't know, a, a Cummington project versus, a, right? It, it doesn't matter which community or, or is the, yeah. no, the percentage is gonna be based on my bill. So it doesn't matter which, okay. Yeah, the, yeah. the, the program is no, going to yeah. operate the same for any customer, like in that utility region, whether the project is in your town, next to your house, or, you know, miles away. Um, the only advantage to, you know, subscribing to one in your areas, whether or not that's important to you and, you know, you want to kind of give back in that way or something like that, but um, it's not going to make a difference. Works, it, it doesn't really matter. It, it's not <laughs> so, going to make a difference yeah. to your uh, bottom line or anything. The only thing that'll change around it is when the project is going online. Yeah. Okay. And, I mean, and, and since we're all, I mean, since all of us are, you know, we're all interested in getting as many people signed up for solar as possible. You know, uh, we, we want to fill our projects and I know you as a committee, I'm sure want to get as many people in Deerfield, you know, using clean energy in some way, you know, that that's the, re the reason I sort of recommend that we hold off on a strong push until the Deerfield project is, is ready to go um, is just because what I've found in the past is that, you know, t response rates in a town actually tend to be better when it's a project that is in their town. And so, you know, if, so I think if, if we said, hey, we, you know, Deerfield, you can sign up for a project that's 20 miles down the road, we might get a hundred people to sign up. But if we said, hey, you can sign up at the project that's at the landfill, you've seen it being built, we might get 200 people to sign up. So mm -hmm. I generally find that just, you know, it, it's, it's good in a town where a project is being hosted to make a strong push about that project. Um, but that being said, like I said, any Deerfield resident can sign up for any project in Eversource West. I'm just curious how many uh, uh, households there are for, uh, in Deerfield, just to get a, do anybody know that? Oh, oh, I think it's in the realm of 7,000, but I, I could be totally wrong. How many households? No, I think it's, I think we have 5,000 plus residents and I think there's somewhere around 3,000 or, or between two and 3,000. That, that may be, yeah. yeah so plenty of people to sign up for a 300 person project, so 300 households. Yeah, yeah. Um, my recommendation would be that, that we do a, a small push in this newsletter and you mm -hmm. guys can, if you wanna, you know, uh, we can send you a copy and you can um, play with it a little bit if, if you'd like, but um, so do a small push now and then a big push that you get really involved yeah. in later. Just because people did just get the marketing and if mm -hmm. people are like me, the second time around you hear about it, you say, oh, this is the second time I've heard about sure. it. Maybe I should pay attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it would hurt to mention it. Can I just ask a um, curiosity question? Is this some kind of regulatory um, setup that you guys are able to do as opposed to just you know making it community and getting subscribers? It's um, I mean, I think it's, it's neat. It's, it's definitely a, 
a different model than with it when the community actually owns it, but it's obviously easier yeah. to get up and running and you know, no expense on the homeowners. So yeah, community solar programs are are made possible by the state government. So they're they're essentially each program actually differs a little bit state by state. So essentially what happened in Massachusetts was Massachusetts, you know, as part of what's called the SMART program. Uh, SMART is the essentially the, the the solar incentives program in Massachusetts. As part of the SMART program, they set up the structure for community solar programs. And, and really the most important thing is is um, I think one of you alluded to this earlier is what we call virtual net metering. So basically the idea that, you know, just like if you own um, solar panels on your on your roof, you are going to be able to uh, benefit from net metering. Basically, whatever you use, you can offset with what you generate. Virtual net metering is essentially the same concept, except it has to do with a, a community solar farm. So it basically makes it possible for someone to subscribe to a farm. You don't have to change your utility. You don't have to, you know, rewire anything. You're basically just able to get virtual net metering credits on your bill from what you um, produce uh, at the at the shared solar farm at the community solar farm. Um, but it does require you know state involvement to basically set the structure for the program. I, I would add to that the other thing it does is really encourage additional solar being built in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, one other question. Yeah. So we are talking about some zoning issues and, and looking at um, ways that we might incentivize large um, industrial rooftop zoning. And I noticed on your website that you do have industrial installations. Have you have you done any of that, you know, recently around here, or is there any way that we might incentivize that to happen as a town? Because we've got a lot of big, I don't know industry. Sure. Uh, uh, understood. So I think, so there's, there's probably two ways that we would possibly look at that. One would be rooftop, uh, rooftop projects for community solar. And we don't do as many of those. And, and our, our business development folks, we better to talk about that. And, and I can put you in connection with someone to talk about it who works out in that region. Um, just because our, our community solar projects tend to be larger, like a, a three megawatt project is probably about 15 acres and so of solar panels and uh, and so a rooftop obviously you know even you know unless you're an exceptionally large roof it's not going to be you know a, a, a three megawatt project so we don't do as many rooftop projects for community solar um, but what we also do though is we we work with individual customers um, on solar plus energy storage projects so if you are a large um, you know, manufacturer or, in, or um, you know, especially if you're a customer with a lar large amount of power usage, um, we do work with customers like that to put solar and a battery um, at their facility, which then to obviously reduce power costs, um, help provide for a more resilient grid, you know, put more renewables into the grid. So, so that is the type of work that we do. And that's behind, behind the meter, isn't it? It is, yes. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, I would love to, um, maybe I can just, I'll connect with you because I would love to um, figure out, I think that's like the next frontier, how we get some of our um, corporations in town to be looking sure. into that, so. Yeah, no, I'd be happy Thank to. We can, we can connect you with some folks on that side. Um, are there any really pressing final questions? Because we have another person yeah. signed up for now. I have a couple of questions um, I okay. wanted to ask. What determines the size of the installation? Assuming there's plenty of land, is it um, is it based on the number of people in the town, or uh, how do you de how do you decide whether it's going to be two megawatts or three megawatts if you've got enough space for three or four? Um, it's usually going to be a question of it, it is a space question. You know, maybe not all of the space will be usable from a, a solar perspective. So we need to figure out like where we can, you know, where it's most effective to build the panels. Um, and then it's probably it, one thing that's also going to come into it is a question of interconnection. Like, you know, what is the interconnection situation around that project? Can it, you know, how big a project can it handle? Um, and I mean, there, there's, there is also the question of, you know, it, it's not going to be based necessarily on the immediate surroundings of customers because we're able to 
a project in Eversource West, anyone in Eversource West can be on it. So, you know, we don't have to factor in too much the, the how many people are around um, the project because we do have the ability to sell it more broadly. So it, it really, I think the two things it does come down to basically are, you know, how can we most effectively use the land, you know, and also um, what are the what are the challenges around interconnection um, that we need to take into account? I, um, I'd like to say this is the contract's already been signed, so th those things can't change. So, um, and we're also waiting right now for uh, there are people waiting to come on uh, our call from uh, from FERCOG to talk oh. about the streetlights. So we kind of have to move on if, if that's okay. Fine. Yeah, we, uh, quick last point. We'd be happy to look at um, the newsletter language here. Um, we do find that there's often some confusion around people thinking that we're gonna deliver electricity directly to them. And, and this could be construed that way a little bit. So we'd be happy to Mm -hmm. I hope you play around with that a little bit, just that we're not actually delivering, uh, you know, it says we sell the energy. We're not really selling the energy. So um, we can yeah. clarify that. Credits yeah. for the energy. Yeah, it's more about the value of the energy. There are some nuances in the wording that make it a little, little more direct, I think. Yeah, okay. Good point, thank you. Sure. Um, any other big, especially I'd like to thank you Excellent people for coming and um, handling all those you emails. <laughs> any last uh, words of wisdom or anything? Now, speak now. <laughs> no, um, I, I just, think, yeah, I was just yeah. going to say um, thanks as well for having us. Um, if you do have yeah any other questions, you obviously have um, our contact information. So, so feel free to reach out and, and we're happy to help answer those, whether it's kind of about the project or, or anything else. And I'll find out about the um, low income question and we'll keep you posted on uh, progress as we get towards um, what we call our notice to proceed or our, our um, permission to begin construction later in the year. Great. Thank you so Great. much. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Bye bye. Bye. And now, <laughs> hi, Alyssa. Hi, people. <laughs> Can we introduce uh, the FERCOG folks? Um, I, should we start with who? Anybody, I, Allison. Hi, I'm Allison. I'm a land use and natural resources planner with the FERCOG. Next. Uh, I can go ahead. Um, Alyssa LaRose, I'm a, a senior planner at, at FERCOG as well. I guess we're going alphabetically. I'm Andrea, <laughs> um, and I'm the procurement officer at the program. Hi, Andrea. Nice to see you. Hey, M.A. Nice to see you again. And I'm seeing, I'm, I'm seeing Mark Rabinsky is is joined. Uh, yeah. Uh, hello. I'm Mark Rabinsky. I'm the Green Communities Coordinator for Western Mass. Thank you. Well, um, so we were going to talk about streetlights and so on. Uh, how should we do this? Is someone from FERCOG hoping to speak about this? I mean, I, I, can, um, I can talk about um, what I think is the, the process. Um, I'm hoping that Andrea can um, help talk a little bit more about procurement. Um, and answer questions about procurement. And then Mark um, hopefully can also chime in at any time <laughs> to either correct me or uh, let us know, you know, experiences from other communities. Um, um, if that makes sense, does that sound? Yeah, right? that sounds great. That's great. Okay, so you got, you were awarded. Um, so I'm just gonna pull up. So I believe the total award, um, you were awarded 153,525, um, which was what was requested um, for streetlight, um, to convert your streetlights to LED. Um, and that includes a few different pieces. It included funding to purchase your actual streetlight inventory from Eversource. Um, so that piece of the project is estimated 
to cost um, 67, just over $67,000 based on a quote, the most recent quote from Eversource, which was in November of 2019. Um, so I don't, that's something that um, we'll need to check with Casey to see where the town is at uh, with that process. Um, so that's a big chunk of it is just to um, own the streetlights first. Yep. And then the just, other piece, yeah, go ahead. Just, just to clarify, all we're talking about is fixtures. We're not talking about poles. We're not talking about anything else. We're just talking fixtures. Is that correct? No, no. I, well, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, but if you're purchasing them from the, um, I believe you're purchasing poles too, or no? Mark, do you know? I don't, I don't know. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I always thought, I don't think you're, I don't think it's the poles. I, th I think okay. it's the, and I don't, it's, you know, if it's a cobra head, I think it's the whole arm and stuff because yeah. the, um, the utility, I believe, would still own the pole, but I okay. don't, don't I, I think that. Verizon owns the poles. Huh. Well, they would be the Depends. utility in that case. They're, they're oh, a form of the utility. Well, I, don't, I don't think it's Eversource who owns them, but I, I don't know for sure. Uh, some, some of them I've noticed as I'm walking have a stamp that say Eversource or w Wemco, um, Wamico. They still have the old ones on them, so I think it varies. But, but the main idea, as I understood it, was we can't replace their lights until we own them. Right. And right. so the part we're going to be replacing is is still going to be purchased. Is the fixture, yeah. Is, is what we're buying. Yeah. And I think Mark is right, too. It includes like the arm, if it's a co yeah. uh, cobra head. Um, um, and they did provide an inventory of all the of your streetlights um, with that purchase price. And so that's what the grant application was based on, um, the inventory that they provided. Mm -hmm. um, so, so moving forward, um, that's part of it. One step is to actually go through that process um, with the utility. Um, and then in terms of the uh, retrofit. Um, the next step um, would be, I think, for Deerfield, which would, would make sense because I think you have 272 lights on your inventory. Let me just double check. That's uh, about right. 292, sorry. Um, which is a lot for, you know, for our towns at least. Um, that it would make sense to, to have, um, have an audit done that would basically um, confirm uh, the, the utility inventory and also uh, um, address any inconsistencies. So it would be some, someone would be hired to come out and um, do a GIS, um, like they would map all of your um, streetlights using GIS. So then you would also have an electronic map of all your streetlights, um, which is kind of nice. Um, and they would determine if there's any inconsistencies with the, um, the utility inventory. Um, and that's really helpful. Um, I guess that could also potentially be done at the installation phase, which is later on, but it makes it, it's, it's easier to do it up front because then um, it makes the ordering of the fixtures a lot more precise. Um, where if you wait until installation and kind of do the, the inventory as part of the install to just have an accurate count of everything, then obviously you may have um, run into issues with not having the right amount of lights or, or something like that, depending on what you ordered. Mm. Um, and then um, there's the, the audit and the design can could be, I think, done by the same um, company, that's my understanding, um, that how it's happened, but Mark, um, if you um, know differently, it seems like based on the MAPC, um, the, Ma the Metropolitan Area Planning Council is the regional planning um, agency for the Boston area, um, and they have done, um, um, they've helped communities across the state with this process um, a number of times and have gone through the different procurement and so I've reviewed a lot of what's on their website. 
Um, and so they um, can hire someone to do design and audit um, as the first phase. Um, and then there's often a separate procurement for the fixtures themselves, which is based on the design. Um, and then there would be a, another procurement for an installer to actually install um, the fixtures. Um, so that's, that's the steps. And what I'm not totally clear about is the procurement for the audit and designer. Um, that was a little fuzzy and unclear to me how that works. So I don't know, Andrea, if you have thoughts about that. Um, um, I'm just wondering, can the audit and designer be done by a PEX company or not by a pre-qualified Eversource provider? Under 25A? Yeah. Is that what you're asking, know. Andrea? Yes. So um, I'm asking. I believe so, but but if if you could send me that question, I can I could um, get a uh, an answer on it. Um, I mean, as long as it's you know under the the hundred thousand dollar mark. So, it better be. <laughs> that's the other thing is is based on so what what you have, based on this kind of calculator that we used um, to estimate the cost of all this, um, which came from the MAPC. Um, the audit and design phase is estimated to cost around $10,500. So it's just over $10,000. Um, um, so that's another thing is, I don't know if, if we, we could find someone who could do it under 10,000 um, and not have to, I guess that would be more of like a, um, just gauging, from, yeah, reaching out to different companies and seeing who, you know, getting estimates from people to do it. Um, so anyway, so that piece of the project is estimated to be about 10,500. Um, is the there fixed, yeah, go ahead. Potentially some way we could reduce that cost ourselves by preliminary inventory, something like that, where we go around or? I mean, if, um, if am I right that you're saying that it, at ten thousand dollars or less than ten thousand dollars, we don't have to go through a big procurement process? Yes. So, uh, so the yeah, the ten thousand five hundred was based on these very like preliminary calculations that were used to apply for the funding. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could you could um, see. As an initial step, um, um, try to find uh, someone who would do it for under 10. Um, I, I would assume that that would be okay, right? Um, to see if, if there's companies out there that could, that would do it. They don't know how much money you apply, you know, like mm. you have the money um, obviously from the grant to work with. Um, so, there's some flexibility there. And tell me again what PEX was, that's pre-approved pre or something? Yep, pre-approved so, contractors. So there's a list somewhere of, of contractors that we could, or you could <laughs> approach. And, um, and is, is the $10,000 a threshold uh, just a generic or is it based on our procurement Estimates and an audit and design for this kind of thing would would be a Chapter Thirty B procurement, and the the um, threshold for services under Thirty B is ten thousand dollars, and okay. under ten thousand dollars, you use sound business practices where they would expect you to get more than one opinion, but mm -hmm. you'd only you wouldn't have to do a formal procurement process. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Andrea. My only my concern about um, 25A for this is that the entire project is over 100 is is estimated at 153,000. Um, so that's over 100,000 dollars right there. I know that there's there's separate parts of it. Um, so I, I would I, I'm I'm thinking that maybe it, it wouldn't be able to use 25A for it because it's not under 100,000 um, dollars. But you can still ask me the 
ask us the question if, if it can be approved or not. Sure. You know, and not using 25A opens us up for more potential contractors to participate. You know, there's not that, there's not a huge list of people who, who go to, to get um, pre-qualified. So it could be that there's a company that's not on that list that we might want to consider. And if we did our own procurement, we wouldn't be locked into those companies. Yeah, and yeah, the list and that I'm familiar with doesn't, as far as I know, doesn't have a lot of the designers that um, MAPC has used that, that I could tell. Um, yeah. I don't know, Mark, if that's your... It, they might work with one of them. It might be one of those cases where they, they sub it out to, to somebody else, oh. or if, if depending on how many lights they might do it themselves. Um, but you're right. It's, I mean, it's always the town's prerogative to, to use their, that, which procurement method they're most comfortable with. Can the uh, uh, audit uh, contract be let before we buy the fixtures? I mean, because, you know, they're not going to take the fixtures off them when they audit. And I'm just trying to figure out how to move things along. That's a good question. I was actually curious about that too, Mark. I don't know if you have any thoughts because if they come up with inconsistencies between the, the Eversource inventory, can that play into the purchase price? Yeah, there was something, I was just reading that in the, the MAPC guidelines about, um, about inconsistencies and I, I don't have an answer right now, um, okay. but I would imagine that, that Eversource shouldn't be charging you for things that aren't there, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or they have a different fixture, or, you know, you know, different wattage or different type of fixture than. Oh, and yeah, and wasn't there also, um, excuse me, uh, uh, a point where we were deciding which fixtures were we wanted to deal with, and not necessarily yeah. every single fixture? Yeah, we may yeah. not be able to may not be able to afford to replace them all. So. Yeah, so that would be part of the design phase um, is, is determining what the um, replacement would be. Um, and um, depending on, I mean, I think often it's, it's depending on what's there now, but there's definitely some decisions to be made in terms of like what type of lighting you want in different areas of town. So that would be part of the, the design, um, that initial design phase. And you're right, depending on how, how it all scopes out, um, it's possible that the money you have through the grant may not end up covering all, all of your lights. Um, the hope was to do all of them, but you know, we'll, we'll have to go through the process and see what the cost comes out. But at least we'd stop paying rent on them. Yeah, just by purchasing them from the utility, you're gonna save money. Yeah. Um, yeah. MA. Um, the, uh, we have a lot of decorative lights <laughs> and uh, again that may change who owns that the pole and what supports it it's a good chance that that those go, do go together rather than the ever you know the ones that Verizon shares and mm. and everything so like in old Deerfield um, all along all along Main Street and they're, they're those decorative lights and those are more expensive. And so again, we're gonna to have to make decisions about what we're gonna do with, the, with all the decorative lights. Yeah, there's, according to the Eversource inventory, there's 77 uh, post-top decorative lights. And um, I mean, those were accounted for in the estimates, but it's, I think definitely more of a, a wild card um, in terms of cost. I, th I think the other thing to think about too is that, and, and I'm not sure about this either, and, and I'm sorry, I don't have all the answers. I haven't done that many street light projects, but if you purchase the, the decorative lights, there's no overhead wires on that. So it, it might be the case where the, the, um, the municipality might be responsible for the underground wires to maintain those too. Whereas if you left that up to the the utility, if they were still the owners of that, they would have to maintain that. So it's it's um, you have to think about the the future maintenance costs of the um, it, like you were saying, David, that you're not renting them anymore. 
but now you have to maintain them too if, if you're the mm -hmm. owner of them. Can you, can you, Mark, can you find out whether who's responsible for the underground wires? Well, the only thing I, I can see is, is on the, um, that led me to that belief was on the, the MAPC um, buyback street light. Uh, it, it says, for example, a municipality might choose to purchase only the overhead lights, leaving any lights with underground wires for the utility to maintain. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes me think that that could be an that could be an issue. Yeah, yep. it seems like there would be less maintenance for underground wires than. It it, it probably is. There, there's probably less maintenance overall, but I think if there were an issue with it, if something were to happen, I think it would probably be a lot pricier. Yeah, it no would be. Yeah, bad. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a good point. Um, yeah, I. Um, and also, Mark, are you able to look into whether the town can do the audit and design piece, or at least the audit for purchasing them from Eversource? Before purchasing them? Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah, I can, yeah. I can ask about that. See if that's okay. All right. It definitely seems like the first thing you want to do. <clears throat> and I can definitely do a procurement for that. It would be a you know, a three quote process, which wouldn't take more than, you know, maybe three weeks, a week to put the document together and a two week period to get the responses back. Seems like for that the, would be straightforward. For the audit to do that first. And then once we have that defined, then we can purchase the, yeah, just you those kind of need the data. Yeah, you need the data before we can yes. go for, further and do the procurement for the retrofit. So the, uh, so you say the, uh, so Early on, uh, you said that Casey needs to. We need to check with her as about where the uh, purchase from the Eversource is, so that we have a. I'm just trying to figure out who's yeah. doing what. Yeah, I think, uh, I'm. I'm happy to follow up with Casey if you want, um, or if you if one of you want to, that's fine too. Whatever. No, you go. You go ahead. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, because I, I was, you know, for the purpose of the grant application, we, um, I was in the loop on the, um, you know, getting a revised purchase price and things like that. Um, but yeah, I can follow up and find out if anything's happened since then. So can I ask a procedural question? Because this I'm a newbie on all this stuff still. So, you know, we, we did some background research and leaned on you heavily, Alyssa, to get this rolling. Do do we have any role to play as far as oversight and you know checking in with whoever we hire as far as things following through or how do we as the energy committee <laughs> participate from here on out? Um, I think uh, you it would make sense for you to be reviewing um, probably. I mean, Andrea. Maybe you have some thoughts too. <laughs> about, well, you know, for other towns, there's usually somebody who gets designated, so it doesn't have to go to an entire committee. Um, mm -hmm. but, but it would be good for maybe the chair of the committee to review the request for quotes for the audit, <clears throat> or you know that, that sort of thing, <laughs> rather than trying to get you know six people to weigh in on it. Yeah, and I think it, I think it would be good to involve um, like DPW in in um moving forward to um obviously um maybe especially when you get further along um mm -hmm. i would think well uh, i how how do i do that andrea how do i get involved do you just keep me in the loop on the procurement or so you're the chair david yes, yes uh, I'm the chair. No. <laughs> i mean i can now help I'm, now and, i've got your number <laughs> I think once we find out exactly what we need to do for an audit, I have a couple of names of companies that do audits from some of the other towns. Um, someone would just, I imagine Alyssa and I would work together on the wording of how we want the audit to look so that it's easy for you to use. Mm -hmm. And then um, some, maybe David, you would review that before it goes out and then when we get submittals in, I imagine Casey might even be involved in that in um, reviewing the audits that come in. And 
Reed is one of our members has been very involved in this project. I mean, that's... yeah, no, I'll be glad to help with the uh, looking over the RFP or whatever it's called. Yeah, sure. I know Reed is particularly interested in the fixtures themselves okay. um, and has done some research. So I think we're talking about audit and design as as mm. a, a group as a one procurement. It's a it's they do whoever we hire does both. Right. That what you were that saying? That was a separate phase. Um, I mean, I think it could be grouped together. Um, that that you're asking for someone who will do the audit as well as the the design. Um, uh, that you could do it in two phases, perhaps. Yeah, mm -hmm. you could um, ask for both and award it in phase one as the audit. Assuming we like you for phase one, we'll continue the contract with you for the design. That's that's interesting too. That sounds good. Yeah, and Andrea, um, MAPC has. A I know they have an RFP that they use to con um, procure. They were doing bulk procurement for design services um, for multiple towns, but there's, there's documents on their website that we can look at. Yeah. Is there a precedent for determining the priority? Like say for instance, whatever, um, retrofitting one of the um, fancier um, lights in old Deerfield Cost twice as much as other lights in town. Is there a formula or a precedent for you know trying to make sure that as many lights are are changed out as possible so that you know ninety percent of the budget doesn't go to yeah. you know redoing a small number of lights? Um, Depends on where the chair lives. <laughs> no, there's where, where, um... Oh, <laughs> it, um, it's an old Deerfield. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing so nothing for Deerfield Academy. <laughs> part of it will depend on some of these discussions, like these questions that have come up, especially about the decorative lights and whether mm -hmm. the town will end up wanting to purchase them or not. But um, in terms of energy savings, um, there are like calculations that you can do to determine um, um, conversion for the different lights you have, how much energy savings you'll get. So if you're right. about it, from that perspective, um, there are ways to figure that out. Like what's the best thing for your buck? Um, that would be the designers. I think, yeah, the designer would be able to help with that, I would assume. I mean, we have a calculator that has basic uh, calculations going from uh, non-LED, I guess it's probably I don't know, incandescent or whatever is typically it's high pressure sodium typically. Yeah, or high pressure sodium to LED. Like we have like basic assumptions um, that we use for the grant application. But um, yeah, once the audit is done and you actually know exactly what you have out there, um, then I, I would think that those calculations could be done to figure out. And some of our lights are also um, shut off at midnight. So mm -hmm. uh, if that was done by the utility, so I'm assuming we have to buy a timer or something to. Yeah, so that's the other piece Control. is controls as part of this. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that'll be part of the design as well as thinking yeah. about how, um, how, uh, what controls you'll want for different lights and, and the functionality of that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hey, David, I have to go. I'm going to send oh. you the notes and um, maybe you can carry on. Can you just double check that you got them? <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. All right. Sorry, I have another commitment. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much for everybody coming, though. Bye, Lori. Okay, bye. Thanks, Lori. So I have a little question, though. If we, if we have an audit and design request, it's not to a level where we can do a request for proposals, it's going to have to be price based. If we're doing it under 30B. Mm -hmm. and we don't know exactly how many lights we have until the audit part is completed. And I think it will be difficult for them to give us a price on the design until they know what they're going to design. So I wonder if it can be done all in one or if we should do the audit first and then step back, look at the audit make some decisions about how we want to 
do the design and what we want to focus on and then do a procurement for design? Yeah, I, I, that... mean, I, think, I think so, because that way we, we can take into account if we're trying to you know, maximize, you know, energy savings, then we, you know, we have an audit as to which type of lights and how much we'd save for, you know, you know, so I mean, we can't do all of them. Uh, so I think separate contracts maybe take a little bit longer, but maybe more. Does that affect procurement or is it all under the lump of $153,000 project? In other words, if we do separate audit from design, does that put us under the threshold more easily for um, 30B? I don't know. Alyssa, do you know if an audit can be done? Would like well, be done it's the same. Audit? I guess it's the same question. It's the same thing that Mark brought up. Um, yeah, I mean, if you split audit and design, they were roughly half and half. I think one was a little less than the other in terms of the estimate. Yeah, so the audit cost was estimated to be uh, just under 4,400. Huh, so we can just hire somebody to audit. Yeah, and the, uh, and the design cost is estimated to be just over $6,000. Um, I don't think anyone would see that as uh, big splitting because I really do think you'd be better off with good data before you go to the design. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I don't know, do you agree, Mark? I was looking at some of the, um, on the MAPC website, some of the proposals um, for, to some of the RFPs that the other towns had listed. And um, the, the proposals were usually done per, um, per streetlight. So they would, it would be like $7 per Cobra head um, would be the audit. Um, and then the design would be you know, $4 per Cobra head and $7 per decorative light something like that. So it was it was almost like they didn't know, need to know either. They would just do it for, they would have an estimate of it and it would be kind of open-ended. It wouldn't be like a flat amount. Yeah, and I mean, the the um, Eversource inventory does get out by, you know, obviously Cobra Head versus decorative and also by different wattages. Um, so, I mean, that might be enough information that, um, they're comfortable bidding on it based on that. So when you say design, this is kind of a weird design. So someone is going to just tell us, I mean, when you design a building, if you design a, a road, you're, I guess I don't understand exactly what the term is. The design is telling the, the contractor exactly how to switch from one style to another? I mean, what I, is I think design? part of that is deciding like what the wattage is and stuff and what would be best, um, what, what would be the best replacement um, light for that location. Because these aren't always, you know, one-to-one. -one. LEDs are a little bit different. They throw the light differently. Mm -hmm. um, they might need to, um, they might need a, a, a different, uh, wattage within there, like wattage equivalent for LED. Um, and so I think they're kind of looking at it of, of how much area they want to cover too. And in the past, we've been trying to figure out how many, which lights should be cut off at midnight or something. Safety was the other factor. It was, it was a, like a police issue. Mm -hmm. uh, is this curve a blind curve? Does it need a light? Versus, uh, you know, we don't need really much here. So, are you going to do public hearings or anything about like well, dark only, areas, that kind of stuff? I haven't planned any. Uh, if we're just replacing, theoretically, it would be with a similar amount of light. Um, so I would I, recommend. Um, if, if you can to do some kind of public outreach because yeah. just just experience from other towns people have a, opinions on led lights they look a lot different um mm. and uh and you know, if it's shining through your window or if it's on for another hour at night that you're not used to yeah. uh they might they, they'll have an opinion on it yes they will we we got <laughs> opinions last time <laughs> um that's a good I, point when Mark, last time we talked with Casey and Andrea, 
I mean, Alyssa, um, they said that we should come up with a uh, a, um, a a plan, a, a uh, public relations plan, which um, which I gave to, I sent to um, here it is. I sent to Casey. I haven't heard back. She's busy, and I haven't heard back. But I I sent it to her a couple a month or so ago, and. Um, it was a, a public education plan for the purchase and replacement with LEDs of Deerfield streetlights. And it involved um, how much we were gonna be saving. It was, it was taught and then, and sort of uh, also, um, how, you know, where we were gonna do it. We were gonna put it on the Deerfield Now website. We were gonna put it on the town website, probably try and do an article in the Greenfield Recorder um, and, and probably have some sort of a public meeting, um, but try and do it in little bits so that people could, you know, sort of have a broad stroke. This is what we're gonna do. And then more details sort of as, as we got closer. Um, so that was, that was the approach. Yeah, I'd recommend contacting um, Northampton too. Um, they, they did a lot of public outreach about this mm. and they, they have a night sky or a dark sky yeah. um, uh, policy too yeah. that they had to talk about a lot. So they might have some some good pointers for you. Chris Mason would probably be the person yeah. to talk to in Northampton. Okay. Um, and I, I think as part of the, the audit phase, there would be, um, I mean, we can, Andrea, we can look and see what's in some of the MAPC documents, but I would think there would be some kind of like presentation of the, the audit results and I think as part of that at least the one that I looked at from Buckland um you know pro provides an overview of the inventory as well as existing lighting conditions in different places and and so maybe it could be written up into the um into the scope um that there would have to be like one public presentation on the results and any recommendations on, um, you know, lighting changes. Um, and then that could be publicized maybe to people um, who are interested. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't think we can really uh, determine the savings until we, we, we've completed the design phase and, and selected the, the new lights. Uh, so I think yeah. We, yeah, we can't so, put a number out yet until we have some more specifics. Um, we are pushing six o'clock, which is when we run out of Zoom. No, we, we, <laughs> we all just fall apart. Um, I guess I'm, what I'm trying to pin down is our next step seems like it is to get an audit. Um, and what what precisely is entailed in that? Who who's taking that on? So I think um, I can I can work with Andrea if that makes sense to um, come up with a draft. Uh, I don't know. Is it a request for quotes? I don't even know what it would be called. Yeah. A draft document that would we would be using to procure um, someone to do the audit, mm -hmm. um, and so we can then um, share that. Uh, with you, David, for yeah. review and obviously anyone else who um, wants to. And we'll be keeping Casey in the loop as well. And um, Alyssa, you have my email from various things. I um, do, yeah. Can you send that along to Andrea or so yeah, I get. So Andrea I get, and I can, can work on it kind of behind the scenes. Yeah, and then you can just. Ready, me we'll in. send it to you. Um, Great. Yeah, and also, and then we have some follow up questions. Like, I'll follow up with Casey about um, where the whole purchase of the street lights is at, um, and and so that we're all on the same page about that. Um, Mark has a few follow up questions. Yeah, please continue to to um, send any questions to me too. Even though I don't have the answers right away, I, I still have access to a lot of people that, that do have the answers, and I can I can get those for you. Um, and with regards to procurement, we, we can't give procurement advice, but if it has, if you have questions about 25A, 
You can certainly ask um, Joanne those and, and I can get back to you on those as well. Okay. Um, yeah. It seems to me we probably won't use 25A, Mark. I don't, I don't see the benefit in that for Deerfield. Okay. okay. Um, so does that sound good? I mean, is there a time frame? Like, do you meet, it sounds like you meet regularly as a committee. Do you want? Once, once a month, yeah. Okay. So um, should we try and aim to have something out to you before your next meeting so that you yeah, can? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. So when your next meeting would be? Ah, that's our February. last thing on our agenda is to make <laughs> oh, our next okay. meeting date. <laughs> Probably in about probably four, four weeks. It's probably okay. four weeks. Yeah, the fourth Thursday usually. Okay. Well, you can just aim for fourth Thursday, but you know you can let us know. Yeah. It's it's the twenty fifth of February. Okay. Everybody like that date? Should we set it? Twenty sure. Two twenty five. So we'll try to get that to you a few days before that, so you have a chance to. That's yeah. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. That's great. Okay. And good. once that's done, we'll then start over with procuring design, right? Is that how we're doing this? Well, it sounds like the market, open. we can do the, um, if, if it's a unit price by, um, by, by fixture, I guess we don't have to have the audit before we get um, uh -huh. a design person. Ah. Yeah, and like Andrea said, we could, you could do, do the procurement together, but phase it. So yeah. that's the first phase. Okay. So we okay. will look into like how it's been done in other towns and yeah, that's great. Um, great. Yeah. Okay. I love Anybody any else? committee that finishes before dinner. That's that's a great. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're trying. We're trying. Um, any okay. words of wisdom from our guests or questions for them? Any last pressing questions? <laughs> No, enjoy your dinner. Yeah. <laughs> and, and really, truly reach out to me with, with any questions. So that's that's why we're here. Thank you, Mark. Right away. Be yeah. careful what you say. But, <laughs> uh, thank you all for, for joining. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, no problem. Have a great evening. Good to thank see you all. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Thanks. David, while we still have some time, I think the most important thing for me is getting an okay on the newsletter. Oh, yes, right. Um, you all should have received a draft. It's, it's an unfinished newsletter. Um, and now it looks like we have some other things to include potentially. Um, but the main thing MA is raising right now is that uh, we would like permission to send the newsletter once it's approved without waiting for the next meeting. So I guess we're saying, can we delegate authority to put out a decent newsletter to MA uh, and all errors and mistakes will fall on her shoulders? And <laughs> I'll second that. <laughs> and uh, and so, sh how do you want to make this motion, Ma? Sure. I, I um, well, just briefly. I think what we're going to do is we're going to have next amp look at that part. We're going to have um, we we're going to have uh, Colonial wants to look at the aggregation part, and um, and then I. Obviously, the town Casey's going to want to look at it, so we have to have approval and, and and some wording on that. And then once we have that done, um, we're ba it's basically the same. We we might put some stuff in. Um, I can't remember where I had that piece of paper. Uh, I think that's pretty much. Uh, th those are, those were the those are the things I was thinking about. Um, we'll we'll come up with some stuff that that works with them. If you guys can approve to give us pre approval to doing those things, um, so I move that um, that that the committee uh, approves the 
mailing of the newsletter once it has been uh, formalized. I don't know how am I doing. Uh, oh, formalized yeah. uh, and approved by the various by Nexamp and uh, Colonial and Casey. Yeah. That we can mail. A second now. Any uh, discussion? Any when votes? Let's. I uh, should we vote? Well, Greg, I think Greg had something. Yeah, Greg. I was just asking, when is it? When is it going to come out? As soon as we can run that process through, uh, you know. In other words, get the approval from those people. So, um, we'll send it out. We'll send it out immediately to them, and I expect they'd get back to us in a couple of days. We'll uh, check it for. Uh, Small Cyclone. errors, some, you know, we'll, we'll make, we'll, uh, you know, read it through and then, then we need to talk to Casey and hire and, and possibly the selectman, but we need to hire the mailing company to, um, to get to print it out and mail it out. So it should be done in a month, maybe soon if all goes well. I don't know how long a mailing company takes. Would that uh, also be posted on uh, yes. on the town website, you know, under Energy Committee? Yes, and it'll, be, it'll it'll also go on Deerfield now, as you know, a reference. We'll put some yeah. sort of reference there. Okay. Uh, should we vote? I vote yes. Yes. MA votes uh, yes. Looks unanimous to me, Rini. You uh, vote yes. Yes, sorry about that. I, I've been here the whole time. All right. Hi, we saw your name. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so there, anything now, should we just table everything and what else is left here? I haven't looked. Um, ah, community planning. Oh, crud. Should we? Table that, or do we have? It's kind of urgent, isn't it? Which one is it? Community planning stuff as the energy input on perhaps the athletic field type thing. And that's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, we've already we already did send a letter, but Lori was talking about that. And Greg, bike paths, etc. Should we table it till next time? Well, um, I wanted to just ask a question about the bike paths. Did uh, did everybody get a copy of the draft map that I put together? Oh yeah, because um, I just wanted to see if people had specific suggestions for, you know, the path or whatever the the paths that I've marked out. It seems to I me that the most logical way to approach it. And probably the most viable way is in two different phases. The first being to take the pre-existing roads where it would be just striping and then to add in later, but to include in the, you know, the proposal when we bring it to the select board, um, the additional um, paving of uh, bike and walking paths behind the town hall that would connect the elementary school and the library and um, thank you. Where you can see where the orange striped lines are, that would be basically new ground that would need to be broken to make those connections happen. The problem just to refresh everybody's memory is that when you're going from North Main Street over towards the elementary school, there is not room in the um, on that road on Pleasant Street to, to put a viable bike lane. It's very, very narrow. And um, the time of day that, uh, you know, the kids would be um, going to and from school would be very busy. The sidewalks would be busy. So it would probably not be a good idea to, to steer the kids on bikes onto the sidewalks because yeah. it would be increasing the chance of there being an accident. Yeah. So what Greg, David had suggested was going behind the uh, town hall and over to the elementary school that way, which I think would be great. 
You have it. You have it going in between what looks like the lot. Is that by the library? It's behind the library. You and go in uh, off. Of, you go in off North Main. That it would go. It would go around that field. Right. Um, I, I see that field. part, but I was just wondering what the entrance on from North Main is. What? Where is that? Behind the library. It's. It goes in between the library and the and the church. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I got it. I see it now. Yep. Yeah. Excellent. I like it. <laughs> and the blue circle is just, it was, I, I didn't know how to get rid of it. It was just showing <laughs> where my house is. I had to figure out how to erase that before proposing or before sending it to other people. But I don't know how to use Photoshop if yet. If you don't like it, this is your target. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I like it. Um, so what can we do? What what would be our role here? Well, I'd love to, you know, to bring it to the select board sometime soon so that the possibility of getting the roads striped when they restripe them, you know, for everything else would would be, you know, in the on the table for this year. Um, so I'd like to do that before the, you know, spring so that they'll have the, I mean, as soon as possible, so that they'll have the option of getting it done this year. Um, so why don't we, should we, do you want to write a letter, Greg, that we can, not, well, no, that won't work, because we can't, that'd be a whole nother month. I see so Reed we do, uh, Reed? Should we check, check with, uh, uh, you know, uh, Kevin to find out what's involved and if that's, you know, it's sort of a guesstimate of the cost, so we have that when we go to the select board. I tr I thought that same exact thing, and I did ask Kevin, and he said sent my letter to the select board, but he didn't want to um, go there. He wanted to them to tell him or ask him for an estimate. Okay. So I think he felt I don't know. He didn't answer me, so he just said I'll forward your letter to the select board. So how about if if I move that we. Um, send Greg's proposal to the select board. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Lini. Uh, any discussion? So let's vote. Um, show of hands. MA says yes. Yes. I, I, Realize I can't see everybody's hands. Wait a minute. Um, looks unanimous to me. Anybody saying no? Did I miss anyone? There. Okay. Uh, unanimous. Okay. Uh, we've got our meeting set. Anything else? New business? There's plenty of old business to deal with. Yeah, yeah, we're barely keeping up with that. So let's, uh, should we call it a night? Yeah. Yep. I move we adjourn. All right. <laughs> and thank you, everybody. Seconds. Thanks, Alex. Thanks. Thank you, Alex. Yes, thank you. Thank all. you, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye. Good night, Rena. Good night. Bye. Be strong. Stay, stay well. Stay warm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs>